and welcome to Christ Church on this, the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Worship would not be the same without each and every one of you here this morning. It's so good to be with, us, with everyone together. The service for holy baptism begins on page 299 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not, and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and, your, and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set up for a pillar and poured, it, poured oil on the top of it. He called this place Bethel. The word of the Lord. Now a reading of Psalm 139, read responsively by whole verse. The psalm is found in your bulletin. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make it to the grave, my bed, you are there also. Even there, your hand will lead me, and your right hand hold me fast. Dark, darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Searching 
Look well whether there be any wickedness in me, and lead me in the way that is everlasting. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of, of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own, own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we await for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Lord, Jesus put before them another parable. 
The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed, seed, sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, an enemy has done this. The slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as, just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers. And they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. A parable of wheat and weeds. That's where Jesus begins with us today. With the story of two sowers sowing their seed in the same field. One with good seed that yields wheat and the other with evil seed that grows into weeds. This particular parable is actually the third in a string of parables about seeds and sowers in the 13th chapter of Matthew. So this morning as we hear Jesus end it by saying, let anyone with ears listen, that's actually the second time in this very chapter that he said that exact phrase. It seems then that the message is becoming clear. Jesus is telling us something here, something worth paying attention to, something that cuts to the very heart of the kingdom of God. See, Jesus paints the picture of this field filled with good seed that's been sowed, only to later be also filled with weeds among the wheat. When these weeds are discovered, the text tells us the workers of the field are told to leave the weeds for fear of damaging the wheat in their process of weed removal. The master and owner of the field says that in the end, it will all be settled. The weeds will be picked and discarded while the wheat is harvested. And notice here, Jesus doesn't say that somehow, some way, he will rid the world of weeds. He doesn't say that there's some magic, holy weed killer. He doesn't even argue against the existence of weeds. 
What he does say, however, in his later explanation of the parable to the disciples is that it is he who is the sower of the good seed. And that because of that, the weeds and the wheat will be separated in the end. We know, of course, as did the disciples, as did Matthew's community for whom he was writing, that sowing a seed in the ground is only the beginning of a plant's process to produce its fruit. Indeed, by the time the seed is sowed, the work has already long since begun, as the field must first be prepared before that seed ever hits the ground. Then once that seed is planted with the right care and conditions, we can all count on a miracle. That miracle that this tiny piece of God's creation will grow into a plant that will produce a harvest that nourishes and feeds us. And this process, the one from the moment the seed is sowed in the ground to the time when the harvest is ready, well, none of it would be possible without the roots, the roots. That's right, for a harvest of any size and scope to happen, the roots have work to do. It's the roots that are the highways for the nutrients that the plant needs. The suppliers of sustenance in the form of water and nitrogen and hydrogen and phosphorus, just to name a few. The roots are the underground stabilizers for the plant in the face of the world's weather, holding that plant steady in the rain, the wind, the heat, and drought. It's the roots that give life. It's the roots that are life. Theologian Howard Thurman, who has been called by many the spiritual director of the civil rights movement notices in his work trees in the desert as a striking illustration of the unmistakable importance of a root system. Thurman notes that the above ground vegetation that exists in the desert is possible only by way of a taproot, a taproot, which is a root that very literally plums the depths of the earth in order to pull up the nutrients needed to sustain the life visible to us above ground. For Thurman then, the taproot, that which pulls life from the source, is a metaphor for the possibility and indeed the necessity of a spiritual life founded in the depths of God. Practical theologian Patrick Reyes, a contemporary writer, thinker, and teacher, points to another root system that is integral in giving life. His illustration comes not from Thurman's desert tree, but rather from the sequoias, those colossal California redwoods that have a rather shallow root system, in fact, especially for their size. Reyes notes that even if the roots of a single redwood spread out the length of the tree's above ground height, the tree would still crumble due to its weight. And that the only way that the redwoods hold themselves up is through connectedness. Their roots are literally interconnected with one another. The system of connectivity is one where nutrients and information are passed through the roots from tree to tree. Studies have shown that the sequoias on the front lines of wildfires communicate the oncoming trauma to trees deeper in the forest, thus allowing them to prepare their defenses for the fire that is to come. It's through connectedness then that the sequoias are fed through connectedness that they are saved. This past week at Camp Michael, Julie and I served as deans at work camp. And in our program, we explored the idea of these two root systems with the camp community. That of the deep taproot of Thurman's desert tree, as well as the connected communicative system of the sequoias as outlined by Reyes. 
Both we used as metaphors of what it might mean to live a spiritual life grounded in God. I have to tell you, as we watched the teenage campers wrap one another in love, we witnessed the power of open arm connection. As we watched the staff lead with radical welcome, we saw the product of a taproot fed by the truth. As we experienced the community engagement in the work that it takes to live and breathe and build together, we heard a fresh and a new God repeat that which God tells Jacob in our Old Testament reading today when God says, know that I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go. See, friends, because the truth is God is in all places, all things, all spaces and places and nooks and crannies of our lives. And the taproot and the redwood root system are both conduits for the Holy Spirit, providing sustenance, support, and spiritual groundedness that allows fruit to bloom and grow above the surface. Jesus says today that even where those evil weeds look like they are taking over the field, even there we can grow like wildflowers and wheat among the weeds, pulling from the life found in our roots, trusting that God is in fact there. The psalmist proclaims today, Lord, you have searched me out and know me. In other words, you are here, you are there, you are everywhere, O oh God, and therefore there is nowhere I can go where you are not. Not in heaven, the psalmist says, not in the grave, not at the bottom of the sea. And today, Jesus reminds, not even in a field full of weeds, because even there, God's hand will guide us. Even there, God's right hand holds us fast. See, to be rooted in God might just mean to be right where we stand, knowing that God is there and trusting God to walk with us as we take the next faithful step. Following God through the invitation of excavation that is examining the depths of our own taproot, witnessing the power of God's ability to unite and sustain through interconnected root systems, well, that is the rootedness that comes from good seed. And friends, there is good seed today. The good seed of God watered today through the waters of baptism. Today, we make the promise to water that good seed so that it might build roots in our own lives, in the lives of our communities, and in the new life of Elizabeth English Masters. And what a reminder on a day of baptism that Lizzie, you are known, you were known, even before we knew you, that your roots already run deep known, loved, and created in God's image as a recipient of that good seed and a product of roots that stand the test of time. Even little Lizzie is called and charged today to scatter some good seed herself. And so through baptism in a moment, we promise to welcome Lizzie into our own root systems to wrap her in love through connection and support as she explores her own tap root and lives into who God has made her to be. To reach the harvest takes careful conditions and care. And today we promise to do our very best to provide that care within Christian community. Lizzie, today we name your roots and recommit to our own. Awakening from his dream filled with a newfound understanding of the immensity of God, we heard Jacob in the Old Testament reading today say, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. My friends, how awesome indeed. The good seed grows and God's roots hold firm. Let's baptize this baby. Amen.
service for holy baptism continues on page 301. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? Now a question for all of you to which the response is a rowdy, we will. <laughs> will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this person in her life in Christ. We will. Let us join with Lizzie who is committing herself to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you, be, do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Let us now pray for this person who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of your spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. At this point, I invite all the children, if you'd like a closer front row seat, come on up. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We 
We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hey, girly. Sleepy. Hey. Lizzie, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lizzie, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this, your servant, the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. She's all eyes over here, y'all. Let me see. Parents and godparents, receive the light of Christ. This light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. This child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. She is to walk always as a child of the light. May she keep the flame of faith alive in her heart. When the Lord comes, may she go out to meet him with all the saints in his heavenly kingdom. Amen. We also present to you, Elizabeth, if you'll grab it for me, a prayer blanket knitted by the daughters of the king here. As they knitted, they prayed by Lizzie, prayed for Lizzie by name. Know that wherever she goes, she is wrapped in the love and prayer of this place. And now, let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. I guess I got to give you back. She did great. She started like looking on clips. That's when I started sucking up. She loves bath She did so good. She did great.
I might be a little biased, but there is nothing better than a baptism. So let's just give a round of applause. What a stark reminder of why it is we do what we do, why we are here, and who it is, the God that we follow. That was my sermon number two. It's so good to be back with you all. Um, this past week, Julie and I and our family uh, were at Camp Michael. Uh, it was a wonderful week. We had a great time. We returned with full hearts and very tired bodies. So you see, my girls are at home uh, resting. Um, want to let you know, just a couple announcements. Actually, just one. It's the, um, the second announcement in the insert. Construction and renovation has begun on Jones Chapel. This has been a, a long-held uh, hope and, and project that has been in the works, planning to be in the works for a long time. Um, a very generous gift was given that sort of served as the impetus of this. Weekend lunch serves nearly 200 folks meals uh, each, um, each weekend. That, along with all of the things that, that we do in Jones Chapel, it's time to put another bathroom in there, to renovate some things, to clean some things out. So we are really excited that work started this past Monday. Um, so just by way of transparency, let you know what's going on back there. Hopefully there will not be um, any issue on Sundays, but if you come during the week, uh, there'll be folks moving around, getting work done. Any other announcements? Okay. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, beginning on page 361. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in Jesus Christ, our Lord, you have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. gifts of God for the people of God. 
Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
service continues with the post-communion prayer found on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the road rise with you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. May the rain fall soft upon your fields. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of God's hand. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is with you this day and will be evermore. Amen.
in peace to love and serve the Lord.